Hi guys, welcome back to Tour of Joe. So today we're going to be going through some of the best places to live in West London. You may have already heard of these locations or even visited them when you came to London. We're also going to be exploring how much it will cost to live in each of these locations, going through some of the most expensive and the least expensive places in the location. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. So first on the list is Belgravia. So this location is in between the rural borough of Kensington and Chelsea and also Westminster. Belgravia is known for some of the most famous and luxurious properties that London has to offer. Belgravia's affluence dates back to many years ago, home to royalty, embassies and various large organisations, Belgravia is definitely a luxurious place to live. Not only that, Belgravia is also known for its amazing four-star Michelin restaurants and some of the most highest rated independent schools London has to offer. The average property price in Belgravia is a whopping £3.4 million. That's right guys, you heard me, 3.4 million as an average. That is 466% above the average London property price. However, being close to both central London and west London, low crime rate and outstanding schools, there is no doubt that Belgravia is the most desirable place to live in the whole of London. Next up, we have Mayfair. So you may have heard of Mayfair already because of its famous position on the Monopoly board. Mayfair is no doubt a classy place to live in West London. Mayfair is an upscale district of elegant townhouses, gourmet restaurants, and some of the most famous hotels the world has to offer. It is also known for its famous tailors on Savile Row, and also because it's positioned in between two of the biggest department stores in the world, Selfridges and Liberties of London. So there is no doubt that Mayfair is a very classy place to live, especially if you're into your fashion. The average property price in Mayfair is currently £2.3 million. To buy a flat, the average property price is £1.8 million. And to buy a house, if you're lucky enough, the average property price is over £11 million. If you wish to travel to Mayfair, the closest tube station is probably Bond Street which is on both the Central and the Jubilee line, making it a very easy place to travel to. Next up, we have Knightsbridge. So, I'm sure you've heard of Knightsbridge before, home to the world-renowned department store Harrods. Knightsbridge is also known for its private banks, which cater to the elite and wealthy of London. Knightsbridge also is very popular and famous for the most expensive property sale the UK has ever had. So, back in 2007, number one Hyde Park sold for a massive 100 million pound. Let me say that again, guys, 100 million pound in 2007. I wouldn't even want to know how much that is worth today in 2022. The average property price in Knightsbridge, if you wish to buy, is a whopping 3.1 million pound. If you wish to travel to Knightsbridge, the best line to take is the Piccadilly line. Next up, we have Chelsea. So I'm sure you have heard of Chelsea for the infamous Made in Chelsea TV programme or because of the famous football club. However, just to let you know that both Made in Chelsea and Chelsea Football Club is home to Fulham, not actually Chelsea. Home to buzz and bars and trendy cafes, there is no doubt that this area is very popular with young professionals and couples also because Chelsea has some amazing independent schools. However, it must be said that if you wish to travel to Chelsea or out of Chelsea, transport links are a little bit difficult. The closest station is actually Sloane Square, so making it tricky actually going south and north of the area. Fortunately, just because of the area is so beautiful, you probably won't want to leave. Most of the properties in Chelsea on the market are period homes, including Georgian terraces and Victorian cottages, but there are also some new modern apartments available. Popular locations to buy a property in Chelsea include Kings Road, West Brompton and Sloan Square, making the average property price £1.33 million. Doing some quick research, you are able to find the most expensive two bed property to rent is a massive £30,000 per calendar month. Next up, we have Kensington. Kensington is a little slice of Paris in West London. Home to both the French Embassy and the Charles de Gaulle Independent School, there is no doubt there is a big community of French people in Kensington. With that, you will also find that there are many independent French bookstores, cafes and bars located in Kensington. Also, Kensington is home to the royalty with the famous Kensington Palace, 
among celebrities, entrepreneurs, and many, many politicians. The SW7 postcode is also known for its museums, home to both the National History and Science Museum, and also the V&A, Kensington is a very popular place for tourists. Transport links are also very good, having both the District and Circle Line, and also the Piccadilly Line in a short walking distance. The most expensive two bed place to rent is £20,000 per calendar month. Next up, we have Fulham. So Fulham is tucked away in a river bend around a mile away from Chelsea. As I said earlier, Fulham is known because most of the maiden Chelsea stars actually live here, and also you have the famous Chelsea Football Club. The area is also pretty green and also known to be the more affordable place to live when comparing to Chelsea. Once an industrial area, Fulham is now packed with picture-perfect tree-lined streets, making it a very sought-after place for first-time buyers. Fulham is also on the district line, making transport links very great and having a choice of three stop. Parsons Green, Fulham Broadway or Putney Bridge. The area also has a very strong bus service with over four routes serving Fulham. And lastly, we have Westminster. Westminster is a very important place to live because of its institutions and famous landmarks. After all, the Queen does live there. Westminster is home to Big Ben, Buckingham Palace, Number 10 Downing Street, and also the Houses of Parliament. The area also hosts some of the most famous streets in London, Regent Street, Oxford Street, and also Bond Street. It is no surprise that given its importance, Westminster is a very desirable place to live. The average property price in Westminster is just over one million pound. However, if you are looking to move into number 10 Downing Street, you're probably going to be looking to spend a little bit more. Westminster also has some great transport links with both the Jubilee and the District and Circle Line. So now let's take a look at the most expensive properties in these areas and also the cheapest properties in these areas if I was to buy a property immediately. So the first property we have guys is a lovely 27 million pound property in Knightsbridge. Um, it's a seven bedroom terraced house for sale. From the outside, I really like the look of it. Um, I think it's really beautiful, but if I'm spending 27 million pound, I definitely would want a detached house. Um, I couldn't have a terraced house, but let's, take, let's go through the pictures and let's take a look. So the first picture, you know, I think it's nice. Um, I really like the decoration. It looks quite nice and presentable. I'm not too keen on the table. I'd want a bigger table in the house. Um, maybe it's just a small family or maybe there's another table. The kitchen's a good size, nice and big, but not too big. Ah, the lift guys, you know, if, if you're spending 27 million pound, I definitely want a lift in the property and that lift is absolutely beautiful. That's the living room, the living room's okay. The bedroom's not to my styling, um, the art on the walls, very, very weird, I really don't like that. But I think it is a good size, but I would definitely change the floor in and I'd definitely change the whole of that bedroom. That bedroom's just not for me. The bathroom, really, really nice. I really like the decor there. Um, I really like the, the surfaces that they have. I think that's beautiful. The outside, you've got a small little garden there. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm sure at night time it's beautiful. If you're hosting some friends, it looks like you've got a really nice view over the whole of London. And especially that pod you have on the right hand side there. I think that is absolutely beautiful. See, maybe that's the master. Is that the living room? I'm not too sure but I really do think the sofas are quite quirky. If they were to come to the property, I probably would keep them. A gym, of course, spending 27 million pound, you'd want a basic gym there. Not too keen on that toilet. I think that toilet is very, very basic. Probably be a guest toilet. All right, sauna, definitely. Must, must get in a sauna in your property. Uh, that shower is really hard. I don't know if it's just my eyes, but I find it quite difficult to look at. And then there's the dress room. Definitely nice to have a dress room. Um, definitely would store a lot of stuff in there, a lot of my clothes, even though I've got about four t-shirts. And of course, probably the last picture I'll show you is the bar. All places will need a bar. It's going to be on my criteria when I'm shopping for a 27 million pound house probably next year. Um, definitely need a bar. Next up, we have a bit of a joke, but I'm just going to show you how expensive it is to live in this area. But for 250,000 pound, all this is guys is simply a parking space. That's right, a parking space. So if you want to park your car in Knightsbridge, you're going to be paying £250,000 just to have a parking space that you can call yours. That is absolutely ridiculous. If you go out of London, probably anywhere in the United Kingdom, you can get a lovely house for 250 grand. 
Um, granted, it probably won't be the best of houses, but for a first time buyer, I think it'll be really, really nice. However, if you've got a spare £250,000 laying about and you need a parking space, then Knightsbridge is your place. So next up, we have a studio flat for sale. So this is on the market in Kensington for £295,000. And you're probably looking from the outside and being like, you know what, that's really good value for money. But let's go through the pictures. There is only four pictures, but because of the property size, you'll probably understand why. So let me show you. First picture. Like, wow. That's all I can say to that, like, wow, wow. Number one, that wood is absolutely disgusting. The wood flooring, the wood decor is horrible. Number two, you have to kind of get on a step to go into your kitchen, which is so weird. And then I think the one thing that's the weirdest of the weird is that there is a bed that slides under your kitchen. Like, that's just horrible. If you're cooking and, you know, food's probably going to go everywhere or come off from the sides or on the floor, and it's probably going to end up in your bed, that's just disgusting. And that is the other side of the room. So this literally is a box room, guys. Like, a box. You're paying nearly £300,000 for a box. And there's the last picture. So you do have quite a big shower there. You can't really get the full angle of the bathroom, but it looks like there's, the stairs are kind of overcoming the sink, so you're not going to be able to get your head under there. It's going to be a really bad angle. But I just need to go back to this picture here. A bath, sorry, a, a bed underneath your kitchen. Like, what the hell is going on here? It's a massive no from me, but it just shows you that people are willing to spend £295,000 on a box studio just for the location. I think they're mad. So next up, we have a lovely £30 million house, um, which is a seven bedroom house on the market in Chelsea. So first impressions, the house is detached, which I think is beautiful. Um, I absolutely love this house. So let's go through the pictures. First picture, all I can say once again, wow. Look at the size of that swimming pool in your house. Saying that, you've got a massive garden as well. You don't normally get a garden that size in London, but look how beautiful the landscaping is. They've kept this so nice, really like this property. Looks like to be a living room. The living room is really nice, good size, really tall ceilings, and lots of natural daylight. That office is beautiful. Look how you can open the doors there. You've got all of that green around you. You've got another door there. You're gonna have so much kind of natural light coming in. I love that office. And also you've got a skyboard, didn't even see that. The bedroom's okay, you know, good size. Um, pretty OCD that the bed's not in the middle of the room. I kind of would like it in the middle of the room. But once again, you've got very tall ceilings, um, really, really nice space. The shower room, walk-in shower, a must. Love a walk-in shower. And you have the floating bath um, in that beautiful color, which I really, really like. The sink's really nice as well, two sinks, of course. If you're rich, you need two sinks. Outside dining area, really nice. If you're hosting some parties, you can have outside. They've got a nice barbecue there. Looks to be like another another room with two max in, which is, I don't know what they'd do on those two max, but once again, I'll take that. Kitchen's really nice size. Um, this is perfect size for me in a kitchen, and I really like that you have this centerpiece in the middle. Um, perfect kitchen for me. Looks to be the seating area where you can have your dinner with your family. Don't like the chairs. I don't know why all these properties have look to have really uncomfortable chairs, but don't like them. And of course, a cinema room. Like that's a beautiful cinema room. Um, you can lay down, two of you watch a beautiful movie. Um, good size, really like that. And then just another angle of the garden, which I absolutely love. So for 30 million pound, I would say this is value for money compared to the other properties. I'm absolutely in love with it. Not only do you get a swimming pool or a cinema, but you actually get a massive garden. Um, this one's a buy from me. So next up, we have a property in Chelsea, which is a two bed houseboat for sale on the market for 80,000 pound. You might be thinking like, what the hell? Um, Chelsea is known for its houseboats because it's quite closely located to the River Thames. Um, this was the cheapest property that I could find. And for 80,000 pound to live in Chelsea, you probably think that's really good value for money. Um, but let's go through and see what 80,000 pound would get you. So my first impressions on the outside is you've got some really nice scenery around you. Um, obviously you've got a boat. <laughs> Next picture, wow. Um, I think that's absolutely horrible. I would not live there. I don't think I'd fit in there, but each to their own. You know, it's kind of cool, looks old. It's probably a modern boat, but it does look old. Looks like you've got a fridge there, I think that's a fridge, and your bedroom's downstairs. You've got lots of natural light, but 
Um, looks like to be like an extendable table so you can eat food around there. Got a small kitchen. Um, there's the bedroom. Probably can't really like stand on the bed. Um, you're lucky enough to stand in the actual houseboat from the floor. You've got a very small and compact bathroom that I don't get if you're a bigger person how you're going to sit on that toilet. There's no room in there. Looks to be a shower, once again, quite a small shower, just shows you how small that toilet is. And that's probably the other bed in the boat, which looks to be even smaller. Um, or is that the other bed? I do not know, but I would not want to sleep there. And there's the picture from the outside. So if you do want to drive your boat anywhere, that's where you're going to be driving it. And there's the picture of the exterior of the boat. Um, I don't know what to say on this one. I would never live in a boat. Um, you know, if it was given to me, I probably would. You know, it's £80,000 and you are in Chelsea, but I'm not going to go and spend £80,000 of my hard earned money to live in a boat, regardless where I am. Mm, saying that, if I was in the south of France, I probably would. But in Chelsea, where it probably rains a lot, like the whole of London and the UK, can't say it's good value for money. That one's a no from me. So next up, we have the most expensive property on our list, which is located in the famous Mayfair. So this property is on the market, guys, for 54.5 million pound. So let's go through and check out the pictures. From the exterior, you know, it does look very old. It looks quite scary, like a haunted house, but I can't say no to it. It's massive, I love it. Um, I don't really care that it's not detached. Um, I kind of really like the exterior of this one. First picture of the interior, really like the design, modern, fresh, love it. There's another angle, lots of space. Kind of like the flooring. I'm always scared of getting wood flooring because my feet would get cold, but I guess you wear slippers when you get that rich. There's a dining table, that's what I mean. Chairs look a bit comfier. Lots of chairs around that table. If you're hosting parties, you want a lot of room. The kitchen, by far the best kitchen on all of these properties. That is absolutely huge. Love the um, centerpiece in the middle of the island. So much space around it. Love how clean and simplistic the kitchen is. And also look at that sky pod, so much natural light. That's a tick tick for me. Small little office. I did prefer the previous big house that we saw at office. Bit more natural light, bit more modern. Bedroom, yeah, tall ceilings, lots of natural light. Um, once again, I'd want carpet in my bedroom, I think, not wood. Dress room's nice, good size. The bath, definitely the winner. Um, that's a lot bigger than the previous bath. I love a bath, um, that's a must for me. Swimming pool, of course. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you think that swimming pool is better than the other swimming pool. Um, I'm quite unsure. This swimming pool does look really, really nice. I like the fact you can walk around it as well. And also looks to be maybe you've got like a sauna over there. Of course, what's that little jacuzzi? Love that. You know, nice, nice little ornament there. It's probably cost about a million pound. And there's the exterior again. So I don't know if it's just because of the angle or the lighting, but it looks to me that it may need like a lick of paint. Um, it's probably you know the color of the bricks you probably can't actually paint it or you're not allowed to paint it because it kind of fits in with the rest of the houses um, I'm not going to say no to this property it just looks a bit old-fashioned and quite haunted to me mm, so I'm not too sure but for 54 million pound I'm not sure I think I would go for the previous property and save the change despite being a 12 bed house and in its location of where it is in Mayfair um, I'm going to say no to this one, I'm going to go for the previous one. Let me know what your favourite house is so far. So next up, we have one of the cheapest places to buy in Mayfair. Um, it's a one bedroom place and it's on the market for £500,000. And you may be thinking, you know, that's not bad. But when I say this is one of the cheapest places to buy, you know, it's quite hard for a first time buyer or if you're moving from anywhere and want to buy in Mayfair to be paying £500,000 for this. Um, there's only seven pictures, let's go through it. First impression of the first picture, you know, looks to be the living room. It's small, very small. Um, for me, it's kind of perfect. But for a family, don't think it would work. It's got nice little Brompton bikes. The guy obviously cycles or she cycles. And the door there located is very, very close. It looks very compact. The exterior is really nice. Um, I don't know why they didn't show this on, as the first picture, but really nice building. It's beautiful. I think that's a different angle of the living room again, just showing that you don't have much space, although you do have some really nice natural lights. So this is cool. The bedroom, um, I think that is a single bed. That's not even a double, guys. So let's let that sink in. You're spending £500,000 to get a single bed. 
Um, I don't think a double would actually fit in there because it looks to be like this is overhanging, so it wouldn't fit here. And the chest of drawers are there as well, so you won't be able to undo them. Um, it looks like it has got an ensuite, but you're not going to have much space getting past that bed. I'm just still trying to work out if that's a single or double. From this angle, it does look like a double, so that's okay. Um, let's have a look at the toilet. Well, no, next picture is the kitchen. Like, wow, look how small that kitchen is. You literally have no room to undo your cupboards. So if you undo the cupboard under the sink and the fridge at the same time, it's not happening. Um, that is so small kitchen. You've got two little hobs there, a tiny little bin that's on the side because it probably doesn't fit on the floor. There's no room. So once again, £500,000 for that kitchen, like no for me. And there's the last picture of the bathroom. It looks to be like you've got a bit more space, so it's not too bad. But once again, it looks very compact, that like you've even got your, your radiator, your towel rail on the wall. There's just no room from it to have its own separate wall above the toilet. Um, I am not spending £500,000 on that property. Um, I definitely would rather probably move out of London if I've got £500,000 and that's all I can get. Um, compare it to the town, the little uh, boathouse, I'm probably taking that boathouse and keeping the change. So guys, that concludes the top places to live in West London. I hope you found it really useful, just seeing how expensive these places actually are on both spectrums, as in the cheapest places and the most expensive. My personal favorite place to live in the whole of West London probably has got to be Mayfair. I do love that area, um, but the cost of it guys, you know, you saw that property up for 54 million pound. And if I wanted to buy a property, the cheapest place is 500,000 pound for that tiny, tiny flat. I'm not too sure if I'm gonna be moving there anytime soon. But saying that, I hope you found it really useful and I'll see you in the next one.